16-year-old Kira Flau dreams of becoming a forensic scientist one day. It's a challenging career choice, but Kira is used to facing adversities head on. When she was nine years old, she was diagnosed with nonverbal learning disorder, NVLD. People with NVLD typically have strong verbal skills, but trouble understanding facial expressions, vocal tones, and subtle gestures. I don't read social cues very well, and it's really hard to like function, and my anxiety makes it all worse. And NVLD is not what it seems, because I talk a lot, and I don't read like body language or like verbal tones or anything like that. Kira's mother remembers how easily overwhelmed she got as a little girl, but says she thought it was just normal childhood behavior. She, uh, she was uncomfortable in certain situations. She'd scream and hide under tables. And we just thought that was just a reaction to things or we didn't really see it as a problem until it started getting worse. Um, if I had to correct her as far as like, don't do that, or I don't want you to do that, or trying to get her to do something like that, sometimes we ended up in horrible meltdowns. So Kira's parents took her for an evaluation at a local children's hospital. The initial diagnosis was ADHD, which didn't match what they were seeing. So they decided to get a second opinion. So we went and talked to a psychologist and he evaluated her and said, this is nonverbal learning disorder and it's often misdiagnosed as ADHD. And so um, I was like, okay, let's investigate this. And, and my husband and I started researching and went to the NVLD project and, and just doing things online. And when we looked at the symptoms and uh, compared to what our psychologist was telling us, we're like, oh, this makes sense. While NVLD doesn't impact intelligence, it can cause struggles with motor skills, attention, reading comprehension, and multitasking, all very important to learning. That's one reason Kira is homeschooled. Over the years, she's also received math tutoring, occupational therapy, and been part of an online educational co-op. I need to take breaks a lot because I don't really focus that easily and I need to move a lot because I can't really stay still and I have to draw while I'm listening and I don't take things seriously so I get in trouble a lot for making jokes and speaking when I'm not supposed to. But it's forming friendships that Kira worries about most right now. She says it's difficult to explain her disability to others. I struggle with keeping friends because I often feel excluded and judged. And I normally can't keep a friend group because it's really hard for me emotionally and mentally because like, I don't know what I do wrong. And everybody's like, I feel like everybody's like mad at me all the time. Michelle says when middle school hit, Typical adolescent emotions combined with nonverbal communication through texting made matters worse. We've had a roller coaster of emotions. The biggest thing is depression and anxiety and um, self harm. Um, she she actually went through a phase where she was cutting and had suicidal thoughts. And those are things that are very real for teenagers. But kids with learning disabilities, um, I think that that's amped up even more because they cannot process what's going on around them. To help process her emotions in healthy ways, Kira joined her church youth group, began painting and writing stories, and volunteered at the Cincinnati Art Museum. But her mother remains her rock in times of turmoil. We've started a new thing this semester where we debrief and um, we'll talk about the day. What went well? What did you struggle with? Let's talk about how we can handle that differently. Um, she sees her counselor on a weekly basis. She sees her psychologist uh, once a month. Um, and the biggest thing that we have tried to help her with is teaching her to advocate for herself. 
So when you don't understand something, ask. I don't know what your face is saying. Can you tell me if you're angry or what you're feeling? As she works towards high school graduation and beyond, Kira says she dreams of a world where everyone, neurodivergent and neurotypical, would be free to be themselves. Everybody would be friends. There would be no expectations or hate because I feel like everybody that's like neurodivergent is expected to be the same as other kids. And since we are, we're kind of like judged and stuff. Michelle's message for other parents with NVLD children, find your tribe. Don't be afraid to reach out to professionals for help and to your community for love and support. For a world of difference, I'm Mabel Jong.